Hey everyone, so on today's video, or tonight's, because it's like 3 in the morning, I'm a bit of a night owl, uh, we're going to be installing a upgraded subwoofer into the stock enclosure in the Civic Type R. Uh, I find that the subwoofer in both the Sport Touring and the Type R's premium, premium audio uh, is very lacking in bass and it really sucks. So after doing some research, I've uh, found uh, what other people have been using and it seems to be working. So I'll show you the subwoofer. It's a Rockford Fosgate P, uh, P3S uh, dual uh, voice coil 4 ohm. So uh, that's the one that seems to be uh, the best substitute for the stock enclosure and the stock um, amplifier so let me show you that. so here's the subwoofer uh, again we got the dual 4 ohm so that we can wire it in a way where our final impedance is only going to be 2 ohms I'll be showing you that later so um, yeah it's a shallow mount sub so manual comes with the protection here I got this off Amazon for I believe 200 Canadian I think people in the states can get it for much cheaper so Pull this out. It's wrapped in plastic. Nice little eight inch subwoofer. When I examined it, it looked of good quality. So on the other side, we have the connectors on one side, connectors on the other side. I'll be showing you how to wire those. For the two ohm impedance, that's what our stock sub gets. So that's the subwoofer. Underneath here, underneath there was the grill. That just covers it up, such, and just some screws that are needed. All right, so we're gonna go to the Type R now. Um, we're gonna take it apart, or well, the back, remove the stock enclosure and start swapping out the subs. So we're at the Type R now. I've gone ahead and uh, removed the foam tray that uh, usually sits here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plastic panel off. So just pull at it, get this whole trim off. Uh, it's just like everything else that's trim on this car. It's just connected by uh, clips. So give it a good tug. Try uh, not to be too rough so that you don't break the clips and it should come off no problem. So as you see, it's off and there you go. I found that the easiest way to do this was actually pull upwards instead of away. Uh, that's where the clips are. They're all at the top. They all clip to the top of it. Okay, next, there's a little tab here. You're gonna open it up. I don't think I can, yeah, open it up with either a screwdriver or a trim kit and there's going to be a screw under there and you're going to unscrew that screw. So after you've taken that screw out, I just kept it in there, give it a light pull and all of this trim should uh, push right out. So let's, as you can see. Uh, I believe the light is gonna, it's gonna come out with the light as well. You just have to unplug it. So there you go. As you can see, we've got it pulled back. That's the trunk light. Just unplug it like everything else. Next step is you're gonna unplug the sub and there's gonna be four bolts. One, two, three, four. Just uh, remove those bolts and the whole sub assembly should just come out. All right, and it's removed. There we have the box. So this screw right there, uh, sorry, that one right there, which is bolted on is the most annoying one to get because you need like a deep socket to reach it over the screw. You can't just unscrew it regularly like the other three. All right, <clears throat> let's go back and swap the subs. Okay, so we have the box here. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take off this seal to expose those screws and remove the screws and take the subwoofer off. Uh, you can see how 
crappy and kind of cardboardy this subwoofer is compared to this. A lot higher quality, so hopefully it sounds better. All right, you get all those screws out and you take the ring off. There is one more screw at the back that's holding the subwoofer in. Uh, this hole we're gonna have to seal up uh, after we put in the new subwoofer. We don't want any air leaks at all. So might as well just uh, seal it up. I'll uh, come back to it to make sure we do that. There anyways. we have it, it's out. I just cut the wires with a knife. So black and red is minus, red is plus. So we're gonna use the stock harness there. So, so for the hole in the box, I just put duct tape on one side, filled the hole with just a little bit of just silicone, all purpose silicone, and then just taped it up again. That should be more than enough to just hold a seal. It's just so that there's not a blaring hole in the middle of the sealed enclosure. Alrighty. All right, so for this next part, you're gonna need some speaker wire. So I've already prepared two wires of proper length that I'm able to connect the positive to the positive terminal. So as you can see, red positive, red positive, and then negative to negative. We're gonna just connect them. So bam, 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 bam. So there we go. Now our speaker is wired to two ohms impedance. Okay, so next is we're gonna have to extend this portion here so that it's easier to plug into our speaker. And then we can uh, plug our speaker to the box. All right, so I've just uh, finished my little extension here. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna plug in uh, sort of the top wire, which is red, into the positive, which is red, and the bottom wire black to the negative, which is black. And then we're gonna put the subwoofer into the hole and screw it in. So if you line everything up, you should be able to use the stock positions for the screws. Remember to screw them in lightly, adjust everything, and then uh, one by one in a star type pattern, screw your bolts in equally. If you have a Torx screwdriver, you can use that or just do it by hand and don't over tighten so that you don't strip the threads. Uh, next, we're just gonna put the grill cover on. It lines up with the four holes and then we're just gonna use the stock screws, that, stock screws that came with it and just drill through the plastic. And there we go, new subwoofer is in. All we have to do is bring it back to the Type R, uh, install it the same way uh, we took it out, plug it in and Test it out, see how it sounds. All right, so the box is back in, all screwed in place, new sub, plug it in. We're gonna test it out in the car, see if it's actually working, and then we can close all of this up. So everything is put back together. Looks nice and stock. Can you even see that anything's changed? The subwoofer works. Hey guys, so I just got back from uh, driving around with the new sub. Um, it makes a bit of a difference, but not a crazy significant difference. Uh, the sub actually does give its own bass now and you kind of do feel it in your seats. It's not just your mid bass drivers from the, from the doors anymore or providing the bass. So you actually do get some bass from the sub itself, but definitely the next step is going to be, uh, getting a line out converter and, uh, giving the little sub its own power supply. Some kind of small mono block amp I'm probably gonna hook up. Maybe even the one from Rockford Fosgate, the punch, uh, to match the actual sub. And then we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. But that's gonna be a whole wiring job I'm gonna have to do from the battery, run it through the trim, and all the way to the back. I did it in my sport touring, so I already know how. Uh, when I when I do that, I'll make another video to show you guys how to wire a sub, any sub, not not even just a small one in your stock enclosure. Let's say you wanted to just throw in a box in the back, whatever. Um, 
I didn't really consider that too much because I wanted to keep the weight down on the car. Uh, unlike my sport touring, I, don't know, I didn't really care in that. In the Type R, I want to keep it as light as possible. But you could also make it that, you know, whenever you're just daily driving, you enjoy a nice 12 inch sub and take it out for whatever, what, whenever you need the weight reduction. All right, guys, thanks for uh, tuning into this video and uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.